Hey everybody, welcome back to the Myth and Pressure channel, home of Nemesis Gear, Steampunk Dow, and of course Knox Hollow. We are back in the Knox Hollow wood shop today. And today, uh, it looks like we are going to be turning some uh, dark chocolate. Yeah, or baker's chocolate, or... Okay, it's not cho it's not chocolate. I wish it was chocolate. Uh, I, maybe I don't wish it was chocolate. If it was chocolate, I would probably eat all of my wands in one sitting. But anyway, so this is called Catalox. And this wood is... Um, it's a little bit... It's, it's, a little, it's a tough one. It is... It's bittersweet. It's definitely bittersweet like chocolate, okay? Um, this wood is often used as a substitute for ebony. It is a little bit more more available, uh, easier to find um, than the actual Gaboon ebony. It's not quite as black. It's it's more of a dark, and it, it looks a little bit more brown in this. Once you get the finishing stuff on it, it's closer to black. It's still a really dark chocolate brown. Um, the downside is it's almost as expensive as ebony. So yeah, you can find it a little bit easier, um, than, you know, than good, you know, pieces of Gaboon ebony, but it's almost as expensive. And let me tell you something, this stuff is hard. This is one of the, one of the hardest woods I've worked with. Um, it's extremely dense. Um, you, you can tell when you pick up a piece of it, it just, it's very heavy. Um, so yeah, it was, it's definitely not high on my list of woods that are fun to work with. Um, it is very pretty. Uh, it's got, it's got its good side. So there's some definitely sweet sides. Um, anyways, so what, what we're going to do here, I actually start off this video, uh, right at the very beginning. So we're getting the whole process of the wand making here. Uh, if you don't care for that, um, you can always skip to about, oh, five minutes or so, I think is where I actually start doing the handle. But basically what I'm doing at this point um, is I'm, I'm getting the wand basically from the, the square, you know, rectangular piece. I'm turning that down to, uh, a round shape. And then I'm turning the, um, the blade of the wand down to about the size of a Sharpie, uh, which is a little less than a half an inch, um, three eighths of an inch ish or so. And that's so that I can put this up inside the chuck jaws. And that way I don't have as much of the wand that's unsupported. Once it starts getting thin and it's unsupported, we start running into problems. And let me tell you something, this Catalox is one of the more difficult woods to turn. And it's definitely one of the reasons why I feed these up inside, um, up, up inside the chuck jaws, because this thing just chatters like mad when you're trying to turn it it's very uh, it's very hard and dense and even a, I, I just sharpened my tools and I'm still getting a lot of chatter on this so um so yeah so basically what I'm do I'm getting it I'm getting it turned down to about the size of a sharpie I'm going to feed mo uh, as much of that into the chuck as I can and uh that way um th this section here I'm just working the next section we'll get it about the same then we're going to feed it uh, up in there as well and now that I've got as much of the um, wand up inside the chuck jaws as I can get to fit, I'll just finish um, getting getting this rounded shape done, and then we'll um, mark out the the general area where the handle's going to be there. And once I've got that generally marked out, we'll start doing the shaping. Uh, again, if you haven't seen my past videos, uh, I will explain really quick. The um, handles on my wands are all approximately four inches, about a half an inch for the pommel, uh, about two and a half uh, inches for the, um, the grip, and then about an inch for that transitional area, uh, which on a sword would be a guard. Um, I use it as a transitional area um, between the handle and the blade. So it's where I like to put the decorative elements and stuff. Um, you know, again, I, you know, I have a lot of experience with stage combat, so uh, I like to talk about the wands in the same terms as I would use for a sword and stuff. So anyways, we're just going to, we're going to kind of go through here while I'm shaping up the chocolate. I, I mean the catalogs. Uh, we're going to do some shaping on this catalogs wand here. And in addition to any editing out uh, just for time, uh, a lot of this is editing out a lot of the, um, the, uh, difficulties that I had, uh, in, in turning this wand, um, you know, due to the density and the, and the chatter of this, I've switched to several different tools trying to, to, uh, get it to do what I wanted here. Um, and overall it is, it, it was successful. It's just, uh, it, there was, um, there was a lot of cleanup that had to be done, um, afterwards as well, because the, with that chatter, 
you can you can kind of see the the bounce marks uh, in the wand and stuff. So a lot of that has to be sanded out. And I think I actually went down to like a hundred grit sandpaper, like just a really quick hit possibly on this, if not 150 at least, um, mostly 150 starting out. But I think a couple of places I actually had to hit it with a hundred grit sandpaper um, to take out the chatter marks and stuff because um, it's it's so dense. Um, but yeah, so we'll, um, you know, combination of, of tools and then, you know, sandpaper for some of the fine shaping and stuff. And then we get this thing kind of blocked into its general shape. And of course, uh, the, the good thing about this is it does sand very well. I, I mean, it's, it's hard enough that, you know, it, it does take a while to sand, but it, once you kind of get it, uh, roughed into the right shape and stuff, um, getting this sanded up to, uh, all the way up to a 2000 grit was no problem. It, it is a very polishable wood. So it does have that going for it as well. It just actually takes a lot longer to, to do the sanding because it does take off uh, such a small amount. So um, I, I did do the friction burns on this. Um, the, it, it works okay. Uh, it, you know, as far as actually, you know, being able to burn the lines in there, that's no problem. Um, it's just that uh, once the wood is polished and oiled and stuff, it, it's so dark that you really don't see much of a contrast um, in the color of the lines. Um, but yeah, you definitely see the texture there and the line work, um, you know, does work really well for this, I think. But I am going to try, as you can see, uh, I'm doing a, a friction burn here uh, also uh, just with a piece of scrap wood. Uh, and I'm just trying to darken it up a little bit more and see, see if I can uh, get it to be like a really nice black. Um, in the end, I, th I think that it just, it, because it's such a dense wood, it really just didn't um, penetrate the wood that deeply as the, the heat didn't penetrate enough to really char that much. And so by the time I did the final sanding and stuff on it, you, you, you almost can't see um, that, that darkened. It, look, you can see it darkened here, uh, but there's n just not a whole lot of difference between um, the uh, friction burned areas and then the final um, wood in the end once it's polished. And after a bunch of sanding and cleanup, I could tell right away that, um, it, you know, most of that friction burn was, you know, um, being removed so you couldn't see it. So I thought, okay, well, you know, we'll give the ebonizing fluid a shot and see if we can turn this, um, you know, dark chocolate into a charcoal color. And I did, I did do this on some test pieces and stuff. Um, and you know, again, it, it works on the test pieces, um, I just don't think that there's a whole lot. It, it does darken it, it uh, and it looks more so here uh, than in the final um, in the final product. So we give it a shot. Um, I I think that it's the the color change is so minimal on there. It just it's almost worth just I'm not really worrying about it too much. So, um, but we give it a shot, and that's something that we try to do with all the new woods: is try our different techniques and see see what works and see what doesn't. And this is our first one out of this. And overall, I mean, I think it turned out all right. Um, it's just uh, not, it, you know, it, it doesn't uh, doesn't discolor very well. So, and I think that's okay. Um, this, you know, the, like I said, the wand itself actually turned out pretty good. So uh, anyways, lots of sanding that I've edited out. And we just kind of polish this up with the burnishing rag. And as you can see, um, you, you can kind of see the color change there where, where I tried the, the different color changing on it. But it's, um, it's not too much but once you get the oil on there you can see how much the um that chocolatey area um darkened up and uh there, there is a difference in color um but you know overall we'll go to the final pictures here and as you can see once we get it in the in the light there's really not a whole lot of difference in the um in the color from the the areas that i tried to uh use the ebonizing fluid but you know the wand itself actually is really nice the wood is is nice and uh, you know I don't know if I, I definitely don't like it better than ebony um, as far as working with it, but uh, it is a nice wood on its own and you don't find in very many woods that are this dark. So yeah, I mean, uh, definitely a viable wood. And why don't we just make another wand out of it and see how it goes. And so we'll just jump right into number two here. And uh, with a little movie magic, we have removed all the beginning steps. Um, if you want to see that again, you can rewind back to the beginning of this video and watch how I did it. It's pretty much the same for everyone. Um, anyways, now we're just, we've got this in the round and we're just going to uh, mark out our handle on this as well. And uh, yeah, so you know, once I got that marked out, um, then we'll just do the shaping pretty much the same as usual. 
And while we're watching the shaping here, I do want to remind you that if you would slide back right down there on the bottom right, uh, right below the video and hit that thumbs up button, that really helps me out a lot, helps out the channel, uh, and it's very much appreciated. Uh, also, if you're enjoying uh, watching these wand making videos and uh, you want to see some more of those or some leatherworking videos, maybe some metal and stoneworking, uh, you can always go down to the subscribe button right down here and make sure that you also ring that bell and that way you'll get notified anytime uh, that I have a new video up. So anyways, uh, we get the shaping done. Let's jump ahead a little bit here. Um, we are, uh, I kind of I kind of think I, I missed a little bit of a section on the, the final shaping of this, but uh, it goes pretty much as usual. Um, and that's fine because I want to get in uh, to the next section uh, because I do actually do um, something different on this. So we're going to go ahead and get the final sanding on the on the handle and stuff done, or most of the final sanding done, uh, polishing this up to um, about a 2000 grit, and then we'll go to um, faceting again. And I, I have done a video, a couple of videos on faceting before, um, but uh, we'll get to that here in a second. Before before I do the faceting, I, I decided I wanted to try to put in some um, gold uh, trim lines in this. And uh, it worked pretty well. I, I was having a, a little bit of a hard time getting this pen to work. So, but we did, we got the gold paint down in these grooves that I um, friction burned in there and uh, just a little bit of a gold accent. So nothing too fancy. And then once we got our, our gold in there, I did have to come back in and clean that up a little bit and we'll burnish that out. And then here's a look of, uh, of what the handle looks like before we go to uh, putting our facets on there. And, you know, again, overall, a uh, nice color, nice wood, hard to work with. Got some nice little gold lines in there. Uh, and let's go do some facets. Want to see a little bit more explanation of uh, what I'm using for this new new tool I've made here. You can check out the Osage Orange video I did previously. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll explain that a little bit better. But basically, uh, all these are is just uh, a, a friction fit deal that I designed on the 3D printer with uh, different size tubes. It lets me slide up onto the wand there. And that way I can... Um, have it an evenly distributed um, angle there. I, you still have to eye it up uh, on the sander, which is what I'm doing here. And we'll do a little bit on the, get the get it roughed in on the disc sander. I do this on the pommel as well. Uh, and then we move over to the belt sander. And all I'm doing at this point is just kind of making sure that I've got a good flat surface there. Uh, and then I take it to the sanding blocks and I'll finish making sure that those are, um, the, all the facets are nice and even. And so here we go with our final uh, oil finish on that. And again, uh, the gold turned out pretty decent on there. I really like doing the fasting on this. Uh, it just gives it a little bit of a different look. And I did it on the pommel. I've got a, a new setup that I'm also going to try to do some fasting in the middle here um, in the future as well. So anyways, here's our final photos. And as you can see, again, uh, it's a nice wood. It's it's not the most easy, uh, most fun to work with. Uh, but it, it does have a nice look to it. And so I hope you enjoyed those. Uh, you can always become a member subscriber as well. And for as little as a dollar a month to support the channel, um, you can always get some perks. Um, so definitely check that out as well. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got another special edition catalog swan coming up where I do a lot more fancy stuff to it. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll get to that in the future. And until then, we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.